In this video, we discuss learning outcome number one of lesson 7.1. Here we find a point estimate of a population proportion. First, we're going to define what that means. And then we're going to explain why the sample proportion is the best point estimate of the population proportion. We're also going to see how to compute that. First, a definition. A point estimate is just a number. It's a single value used to estimate a population parameter. Here are some examples. The sample proportion p hat is a point estimate of the population proportion p that's highlighted here because the population proportion p is the focus of lesson 7.1, which is all about estimating that population proportion. Um, sample mean x bar, that's a point estimate of the population mean mu. And the sample standard deviation s is a point estimate of the population standard deviation sigma. So we've already talked about lots of different sample statistics. We have sample proportion, sample mean, sample standard deviation, sample variance, sample range, sample median. All of that was discussed when we talked about um, sampling distributions um, back in chapter six. Um, each of those can be used to estimate the corresponding uh, population parameter. And if we're using that value as a point estimate of the population parameter, or well, if we're using that value to estimate the population parameter and it's just a single value, we call that a point estimate. Now, some of those are better estimators than others for various reasons. We're going to see that the sample proportion p hat is the best point estimate of population proportion p and with good reason um, in just a few slides here. But first, let's think more about the sample proportion p hat and look at some examples. So, so just for example, we might have um, this statement. A survey of a sample of likely voters showed that a politician has a 49% approval rating. That 49% of those likely voters in that sample is a sample proportion. Now, I know it's written as a percentage, but that's 49% out of the total um, sample of voters, so that's a proportion of that sample, so it's a sample proportion. Another way of saying the same thing in a much wordier way is this. A sample survey provides a relative frequency approximation of the probability of a randomly selected adult of voting age approving of this particular politician. That estimated probability is 0 0.49. So rather than saying, a survey of the sample of voters showed that a politician has a 49% approval rating, we could say that that survey of a sample of voters gave us a probability of a randomly selected um, voter um, approving of that politician, uh, that probability of 0 0.49. So probabilities are numbers between zero and one inclusive. And we could say this, this way instead of this way. This is probably my favorite way. 49 out of 100 people surveyed approve of the politician. All three of those say the same thing. So the first one talks about the sample proportion and it lists it in the form of a percentage. And the second one lists that sample proportion as a probability. And the last one lists it as just a true proportion. It's just 49 out of 100. But all three of those statements are saying exactly the same thing. So all three of those are the same point estimate of that approval rating P, that point estimate is based on sample data for a particular um, sample and a particular survey of likely, of likely voters, excuse me. What I want you to notice here is that percentages, whether they are written in decimal form or in percentage form, proportions and probabilities, they can all be used interchangeably. So if I have this percentage and I wanna to convert to a probability, I just move the decimal over twice I have this probability and I want to convert to a percentage, I multiply by 100. Or if I take this fraction and I multiply by 100, I can get that, that um, percentage over here. But they are all representing the same thing. It's all a proportion of some sample um, that had some preference in this case. Percentages, proportions, and probabilities can be used interchangeably. That's the point of the slide. Now, before we talk about why sample proportions are the best point estimate of the population proportion P. I wanted to remind you of um, what we talked about as far as sampling distributions in chapter six. We said, if you have some larger population 
and you randomly select n values from that population. And then you find a proportion for that sample. And then you do that again. And you find another proportion and you do that again and you find another proportion. And each time you do that, um, let's say you're um, selecting a sample of a thousand voters. So you select a thousand voters and you compute a sample proportion for that approval rating. And then you select a thousand different voters and you um, find a proportion for an approval rating again. And then you select a thousand different voters and you um, compute that approval rating again. As, again, as a proportion p hat for each sample. You can have a lot of p hats. Um, you could select a thousand uh, voters a lot of different ways. And if you do this for a really long time, you would have a lot of, a lot of different p hats. Um, and if we're selecting with replacement, we could do this indefinitely. So we have all of these sample proportions. If we then look at the distribution, not of the original data, but of the sample proportions themselves, it turns out that that distribution of sample proportions, which is called a sampling distribution, um, tends to have a normal distribution. And that normal distribution has a mean equal to the population proportion. Now remember mean and expected value, those are the same thing. So what we're saying is the expected value of p hat, if we do this after for a really long time, we just keep repeating this process, the expected value of that sample proportion is exactly what we want it to be. It's the population proportion. So that is actually the first reason why p hat is the best point estimate of p. Um, back in chapter six, and way back in chapter three, before we understood sampling distributions, we said that a sample statistic is an unbiased estimator of the corresponding population parameter if the mean of that sample statistic, in the sense that it's the mean of the sampling distribution of that statistic, which can be calculated in the same way that we found means with discrete probability distributions in chapter five, that mean is equal to exactly what we want it to be. It's equal to that population parameter. Um, so this is what it means, uh, or this is a visual way of describing that idea of having an unbiased estimator. Now, when we say that a p hat is an unbiased estimator of p, we're not saying that p hat is equal to p. That's, that's not the fact at all. But what we're saying is if we keep computing p hat and we keep computing p hat and we keep computing p hat for a bunch of samples, all of the same size, and then we look at the mean of those. Notice that if I were to average this sort of geometrically, the average of all of these little um, like bullet holes in our target here would be directly in the middle of that target. Now these on the bottom are more spread out, but they are also um, the average of those would also be directly in the middle of that target. So we say that p hat is an unbiased estimator of p if the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat is equal to the population proportion of p. Another thing that we say is that p hat targets p. And when we say it targets p, what we mean is if, as we take the average of those, the average is right on target. It's ex giving us exactly what we want. That's, that's true here and true here. Now these are not nearly as spread out as these are though. So that is another reason why p hat is the best point estimate of p. p hat turns out to be the most consistent estimator of p among all of the unbiased estimators. If you're saying, what do you mean by consistent? This is what I mean by consistent. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat tends to be smaller than the standard deviation of other unbiased estimators of p. Remember what the standard deviation is. That's a measure of variation from the mean. So the mean for both of these little graphs over here is equal to that center of the target. The mean for an unbiased estimator is exactly what we want it to be. In this case, it's the population proportion p. Um, but this top graph represents maybe p hat. This is more consistent than whatever that other unbiased estimator 
um, is that can be represented down here. When I say it's more consistent, I mean, look, there's less variation in it. They're, they both have the same mean, but these p hats, if these were our p hats, are much more spread out. These p hats are all sort of centered, they're clustered around that middle point um, in our target. Now, that's not actually what it would look like if we were looking at graphs. Um, if we were talking about a consistent estimator, the distribution would just be sort of skinny. It would be, instead of being spread out a lot, it would be like very skinny and tall. Um, but again, what that means is that there's less variation in p hat. So not only does it target what we want, but it targets what we want in a way, in such a way that p hat is closer to the actual value of p than all of the other unbiased estimators of that population proportion p. So we're saying the average is what we want it to be, and it's, these values are closer to the middle. They're closer to that value that we're looking for than other unbiased estimators that may also have the same mean, but they're more spread out. Um, so that's why p hat is the best point estimate of p. Now let's actually compute p hat. We've done this before. Um, we just didn't really think of it in this context. So this is a, a question re referring to McDonald's and Mickey D's. It says, in a study of the accuracy of fast food drive through orders, McDonald's had 33 inaccurate orders among 362 orders. The question says, find a point estimate of the proportion of all McDonald's orders that are not accurate. Well, we had 33 inaccurate orders out of 362 orders. So p hat is just the 33 divided by the 362. And that turns out to be 0 0.091 approximately. So the conclusion is that our data suggest that the best point estimate of p, where p is the proportion of all McDonald's orders that are not accurate, is 0 0.091. It's the best point estimate that we have based on our data. Another way of saying this is that about 9.1% of all McDonald's orders are not accurate, but that's based on the sample data. Now, if you're saying to yourself, 9.1%, huh? If we did this again for 362 different orders, would we get exactly 33 inaccurate orders that time? Probably not. It might be off a little bit. Maybe next time it's 35 inaccurate orders out of 362, or maybe the time after that it's going to be 29 out of 362. Um, so those p hats are going to vary a bit. Um, so while this is a point estimate of that population proportion p, we're really still not sure how good it is. We don't have a margin of error around that 9.1%. Um, so while this is a great place to start, we're not going to stop here. We're going to talk more about confidence intervals later, which will give us some sense of whether or not this p hat is a, a good estimate. Or we know it's a good estimate. We know it's the best point estimate we have. But we might want to know like how good an estimate is that particular point estimate. And that's what confidence intervals are for. So that is the end of our discussion of um, the point estimate of the population proportion p and the best point estimate is the sample proportion p hat. Um, in the next video, we'll just start our discussion of confidence intervals.